Good evening, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome to the Yukon Planning Commission for November. Uh, first thing will be our invocation given by Commissioner Smystrela and the flag salute given by led by Commissioner Beaver. Please stand. Mm -hmm. Dear Heavenly Father, we thank you for bringing us here this evening. Thank you for letting us be Americans. Thank you for letting us live in Yukon. It, we are blessed in so many ways. Give us the intelligence and the determination and to make the right choices this evening to better enhance our city. And we also want to thank you for all the servicemen that are doing their duty overseas as well here as in America. And we do thank you again for all your blessings. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Roll call, please. Terry Beaver. Here. Here. Erlene Smeisterla. Here. Robert David. Here. Bob Doggett. Here. And Larry Taylor. Here. Uh, could Mitchell, could you go back here and punch that down just a couple of degrees? Thank you. You too. Huh? Yeah. <laughs> it was usually like hanging meat in here, but little warm tonight. Uh, first item is approval of minutes of the October 8th meeting, 2012. <coughs> it was sent out in our agenda. Do we have a motion comments? to approve. Motion to approve. Do we have a second? Second the motion. We have a second. Uh, any discussion? Call a roll, please. Larry Taylor. Yes. Bob Doggett. Yes. Robert David. Yes. Erlene Smeisterla. Yes. Terry Beaver. Yes. Item two is the visitor section. If there's anyone here that would like to address the commission about something that is not an agenda item, you may step to the platform and do so at this time. Seeing none, we will proceed. Item three is consider an application by Midwest Hotels, LLC, Manar Patel, for a conditional use permit for a 70-foot pylon sign to exceed the maximum allowable sign height of 35 feet, Yukon Code of Ordinances 94-11, parentheses 1, being lot 2B, Block 1 of Yukon Parkway West, Phase 1, Yukon, Canadian County, Oklahoma, located at 1520 Garth Brooks. Uh, someone here to speak to that, please, sir. You'll give your name and address, please. Name is Mike Patel. I'm with the Midwest Hotel LLC. Uh, the address of the property is on Garth Brooks Boulevard and I-40. Yes. Uh, we're building a Fairfield Inn and Suites. Uh, being on an interstate corridor, we would like to request a variance for a 70-foot tall sign. I know we've done this in the past, haven't we, Mitchell, on the, wasn't the Ford sign or Wendy's or something? Yes, actually, this is what we call conditional use permit. It puts conditions upon the sign, but yes, this is something that we've done before with multiple signs out there. Yeah. <coughs> um, so you're building a Fairfield Inn, and this uh, would attract visitors to Yukon, hopefully, so they'd stop in at your inn and spend money here in town. That is correct, sir. Any of the commissioners have a question? Or I've got a, I've got a question to uh, Mitchell uh, on the uh, zoning ordinance on item number four where it talks about uh, the corridor regulations allow signs up to 80 feet. Why don't we just go ahead and pass an ordinance where... Well, uh, on these signs, there are several things we like to look at. I is it something going to be used for the interstate traffic? Mm -hmm. uh, also, on those signs, they have special requirements and special design requirements. For him to start his design process, he actually has to get approved for this 70 foot tonight before he actually contracts with them to design the sign, the footing, mm -hmm. and the pole that, that supports it. Mm -hmm. uh, we're trying to maintain those signs in that corridor and not get outside that corridor. Right. Okay. 
Th didn't we, did that ordinance that we talked about or passed a year ago, has it ever been given to the city? Uh, the sign ordinance has not been brought back forward. There's some things that we're working on. You'll be seeing a new sign ordinance in the near future. Okay. Any other discussion <coughs> from the commissioners? Does this question for Mr. Patel? I'm sorry, Chairman, but does this also include the uh, the 30? What is that? The uh, oh. six to 12 foot sign also. That'll be on the side of the health way, health park health. No, the only sign that we're here to talk about tonight is the 70 foot okay. sign because okay. he has a variance in the building height already. Okay, well, since it was in our notes, I Yeah, they were getting that for reference to show you what they're doing. Okay. They're trying to provide you with all the information you need to make the decision. Okay. I have no more questions. Okay. okay. Any other questions from commissioners? No. Um, we'll accept a uh, motion. I'll make the motion. In the case of the application for a conditional use permit submitted by Midwest Hotel LLC, we have read the staff report and received testimony at the public hearing. We find ourselves in agreement with staff findings, including all attachments cited in the staff reports. I move that this item be recommended for approval to the City Council. Do we have a second? Second. We have a second. Motion and a second. Any further discussion? Anyone in the audience have anything? Call the roll, please. Yes. 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 Thank you for investing in our city, sir. We Thank you. We appreciate it. Thank you. Item four is consider an application by Jim and Mary Kay Niles to rezone from C5 Automotive and Commercial Recreational District back to C3, Restricted Commercial District, for Lot 1, Block 2, Legacy Lakes Edition, located at 1501 Ranchwood, South Ranchwood Boulevard. Mr. Niles? Yes, sir. I'd be glad to answer any questions. Uh, we're zoning down from C5 to C3 for permitted use of an office building. It's going to be for Mr. Bogle moving the uh, First American Mortgage that's currently located on Vanament, and he's going to buy the property and build a new mortgage company building on the, the southeast corner that adjoins Yukon Parkway and Ranchwood. At tip of the of the yes. your piece of ground there yeah. runs from the corner down to and including the lift station on that property. It's about 1.3 acres there total square footage. And the, it's a permitted use, I think, supposedly in C5, but it's more, more fitting to have the C3 zoning rather than have a conditional use permit in C5, if I understand it correctly. Is that correct, Mitch? Yes, we asked them to rezone it. We thought it would be a better zoning for the proposed use. Okay. Have you seen any plans on the building or anything yet? Or? Oh, uh, they were asking for some setbacks <coughs> because of the unusual shape of the property. They're actually bringing some stuff forward on the Board of Adjustments, but we have seen a floor plan. So it will go through the Board of Adjustments then? For the setback yeah. issues, yes. If you'll notice, that lot's very interesting, very yeah. unusual shape. Yeah, that's an interesting <laughs> lot. Yeah, and they already have two fixed driveways there, so the driveways are not in question. It's just the zoning, so we can z down zone it to a C3 to allow the UCs proposing. Any questions from the commissioners? Down zoning. I'll accept a motion. Mr. Chairman, I'd like to make a motion. Okay. If I may, in the case of the application for rezoning submitted by Jim and Mary Kay Niles, we've read the staff report and received testimony at the public hearing. <coughs> find ourselves in agreement with staff findings, including all plans and attachments cited in the staff report. Uh, move that uh, this I item be recommended for approval to the City Council. Mr. Chairman, just for a point of order, did you make sure there was nobody in the audience to speak on this issue? Well, we have to get a motion. Uh, yeah, a second. I just wanted to make sure. Yes. Yeah. Is there a second? Second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Now, discussion. Is there anyone in the audience that has anything they want to discuss on this? If you'll step forward. Any further discussion among the commissioners? 
Seeing none, call the roll, please. Robert Taylor. Yes. Larry Taylor. Yes. Bob Johnson. <coughs> yes. Terry Yes. 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 Thank you, Mr. Niles. Thank you. This will go before the City Council at the uh, December meeting, I would think. Will it, Mitchell be there for the December meeting? Uh, it may not make it there because what happens now, we have to actually write the zoning ordinance to accompany the recommendations for them to approve or disapprove. Also, the sign that we just passed before would? That will probably be on the next one because all your recommendations just go forward on it. Yes. Okay. Uh, item five. Uh, can it consider an application by Mark McCaslin for a second drive curb cut being lot 11, block 2 of the Von Elm Estates located at 1141 Moose. Someone here to discuss that with us. Yes, state your names. Mark McCaslin. Okay. I'm a resident of the property in discussion here. Um, I have a driveway on the west side of the house which allows access to the garage. The space constraints on the west side of the house are very limited due to the electrical and the air conditioning equipment that's on that side. There's considerably more space on the east side which would allow me better access to my backyard and I would like to uh, put another driveway in there. Uh, I've made reference in my application that there is a storm drain at the street, at the curb. There's also the sanitary sewer manhole, which is on the east side of my property. I would propose to make a curved driveway, which would allow no, no impede, impeding on either of those items. So just a convenience factor for making it into the backyard. Those are about one acre lots. And you have a shop back there or something? They're currently constructing a shop back there, which is under permit. Mitchell, has the city been out and looked at this uh, proposal? It's my understanding that they have been out there and reviewed this. So it, wouldn't, it would not interfere with the storm drain or the sanitary sewer? Actually, all he's proposing is to get the driveway past the front of the house, is my understanding, and then driving on the grass behind that for now, right? Or is the driveway all the way? Well, my, my, I would propose to bring concrete to the front corner of the house and then just be got some uh, uh, gravel so My point was that it, it will not interfere with maintenance of the storm or the use of the storm drain or sanitary sewer. No, because it's an open channel if you look. And there is a spot that is underground for a little bit there that he's talking about where it picks up the curb and gutter there and puts it into that box that oh, actually yeah. drains in the open channel. Okay. What uh, what about the sanitary sewer? Is that going over the top of that? Over the manhole, yes. But they already crossed that out there anyway in a couple of places anyway. Has this been, this is something that's been done before out there? There is a couple out there, I think two, I think. Extra curb cuts? I think so. Yeah. There's some circle drives out there. Okay. Where's the where's the manhole? Manhole is immediately east of the southeast corner of the house. So it's on their driveway side. No, it's on it's on the side that's not does not currently have a driveway. Okay. So it's. I'm, I'm sorry, I don't fully understand. It's, it's over there where the new driveway will go? Yes, it is, the but I intend, I, intend to, I intend it to leave the manhole east of the drive. Oh, okay. So, it won't, so there won't be any paving that surrounds the, the manhole. Mm -hmm. That's the reason this curve that you that's, that's correct. Well, that and the fact that you've got that the storm drains, the, the, the cast iron storm drains in, in the curve would necessitate it being either angled or curved to get mm -hmm. to that side of the house. Okay, is there any other questions from the <coughs> council or the staff? I'm sorry, commissioners. <laughs> uh, I'll accept a motion then. Someone 
care of the next one. I'll um, make a motion. Okay. In the case of the request by Mark McCaslin to review proposed driveway location for the residence located at 1141 Moose Street, we have read the staff report and received testimony at the public hearing. We find ourselves in agreement with the staff findings, including all plans and attachments cited in the staff report. I move this item to be approved with, the f with no restrictions, no findings. And this, this, this doesn't have to go to the city, does it? Driveways do not go okay. to the city. I make a motion for council anyway. Okay, do we have a second? I'll second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion from the audience? Anybody has anything they'd like to bring up or commissioner? Seeing none, call the roll, please. Yes. 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 Okay, sir. Thank you. Uh, item six, uh, consider an application by Richard Reese for a second curb drive curb cut being lot 128 McKinney Heights edition located at 1501 Glenda Drive. Have y'all noticed all the addresses or? Yes, amen. 1520, 1501, <laughs> and 1501. Uh, wow. <laughs> okay. Uh, yes, sir, go yes, ahead. Yes, I'm Richard Reese and I, uh, the owner and I reside at this residence here. So. The main reason I want this to put a new driveway is to get the vehicles off the street because over the past about 30 years that I've lived there, I've had my vehicles hit numerous times by people coming or if I'm at the corner, making the turns around the corner, you know, side swiping my vehicles and then you just, they disappear, of course, it's in the middle of the night or something. So this is just helps get it off the street, make it clear at that corner and it gets pretty crowded whenever, you know, other cars are in there. You have a large, rather large piece of property there? Well, it's on, it's a corner property, so it's on both sides of this, this street in this corner. The existing driveway is, is almost on the other side of the property, and it's not very large. So this will just give me a place to get vehicles off the road. Have, you, the have you constructed a building back there? There is a building back there, and there's already concrete around that building. So this, will, this driveway will go up and abut that, you know, tie in with that other <coughs> concrete. Give me room to park off the street there. A couple of vehicles. It's going to be a 23 foot wide, so it's a regular double car right. drive. Okay, do we have questions from the commissioners? Not me. Anybody have anything? Accept a motion from someone here to give one. I'll make the motion. In the case of the request by Richard Reese to review a proposed driveway location for the residence located at 1501 Glenda Drive, we have read the staff report and received testimony at the public hearing. We find ourselves in agreement with staff findings, including all plans and attachments cited in the staff reports. I move that this item be approved. We have a second. I'll second the motion. We have a motion and a second. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to discuss this or have anything to say? <coughs> Any of the commissioners, staff, or anybody? Call a roll, please. Larry Taylor? Yes. Larry yes. Robert yes. Robert yes. Robert yes. Robert yes. 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 Thank you very for much. Mm -hmm. Item 7, consideration for an application by Domino Express Convenience Store for a curb cut located in Oklahoma City with a Yukon mailing address being 12930 Northwest 10th Street. Mr. Chairman, before we get started here, I uh, wanted to advise you the variants are seeking is Appendix B subdivisions and platting, Section 2.06 Arterial Street Frontage Access Control, Item G. It says whenever individual commercial industrial lots front on a collector street or arterial street, the Planning Commission shall determine the distance of the driveway or driveways to said lot from the nearest intersection. So that's the one that they're here about, which is kind of an unusual situation that we have here that Phil's going to go into. Oh, Mr. Smith is going to talk about some here. Go ahead, go sir. Give ahead your name. Ahead. I'm Martin Smith, the Elmer Smith Wool Company, Domino Express. Um, I guess, I guess part of the issue is 
you know the lot being in the city of Oklahoma City. Yes. Um, you know, we signed a contract several months ago. Went through the whole zoning process. Um, got that approved. Um, Mr. Hagen with Craft and Toll, their firm did all the engineering work, traffic studies, all our building plans, um, and you know, we submitted this to the city of Oklahoma City, who approved um, the driveway was under their parameters, um, and the plans have been approved. We have a building permit. Um, you know, we're going to pour the footings of the building in the morning. Um, you know, after construction began, we were made aware that we needed to visit with you guys about the location of the drive on the south side or north side of our property. Can you tell us about a Domino Express? I mean, it's, it's um, you know a large format modern convenience store with several fuel dispensers. Um, um, Going to have a large tunnel car wash in the rear of the store. It's a typical convenience store. Do uh, they it's, sell food? It's a little larger, a little nicer, um, a little more modern layout than, than a typical convenience store. And they have quite a large gas station there. Yeah, we'll have 10 fuel dispensers. 10. Yeah. Okay. Capacity to fuel 20 cars at once. Right. Now, this driveway that you've got already located on here, is it, uh, I mean, Mitchell, so. Is there anything that we know of? I mean, how would we have acts uh, to ha say what's going to be put in if they just the rest of it's that piece of ground's so well, commercial, isn't it? Well, the, the the issue becomes who controls the access onto 10th Street. It is my understanding from talking to our city attorney and stuff that we uh, have control of access onto 10th Street, which is kind of debatable if you, when you talk to Oklahoma City. But we're actually recommending approval of this subject to the traffic impact study that was done in June 2012 by traffic engineering consultants. It actually uh, says that this driveway location will work, and that's actually the traffic study that's been included into. Right, I read the that they, they said that it, it would so have negative impact. Yes, yeah, so what we're doing is recommending with the traffic study that uh, you approve this tonight. Attached. To Attached. Mm -hmm. Okay because it's such an unusual situation and we've got things to talk about in the future. Yeah, we want to be on good terms with Oklahoma yes. City on, on an adjoining piece of ground there that's mm -hmm. going to have a, a lot of things on it. Yeah. We just want to make sure it was safe and does meet the requirements of UConn because we would be the ones that would be working the wrecks and stuff if there's any wrecks in well, along be, 10th Street. There will be, you know. Yeah, just and, the nature. And on uh, Cemetery Road then, we don't have that. We don't have any control over Cemetery Road going That's south. Oklahoma City that or is that correct. state? That's Oklahoma City. Okay. That's not 92 no more. That's Cemetery Road. Really? Yes. That designation was removed several years ago. Okay. But staff is recommending approval where the current, where this drive, proposed driveway is located. Because of this traffic study. Of, yes. the tra of the attached traffic study, which said there would be negative impact. Yes. Okay. Hey, do the commissioners have questions for this gentleman or for the staff? The only uh, liquor address concern I had, because when I was out and running about today, I was at the 7-Eleven at Mustang and, and 10th. Uh -huh. And the drive is similar on 10th, distance from the curb and everything. And it jams up in there. And I don't know if that's narrower than this drive or what. But, uh, there is actually a turning lane in this intersection here, which allows a little more room. It's not quite as congested. If you remember right on that one, that's actually in Oklahoma City limits on both those drives. It narrows down some. We're yeah, going to the east. Okay. And I don't know if they did a traffic study or not on that one, but with what they propose and, and uh, what the engineer has reviewed and submitted, it recommends the driveway being installed and does meet the requirements. So our staff engineer has reviewed this also. This has been reviewed at the highest levels of the city of Yukon. Uh, they had a meeting with us the other day, and it was decided after reviewing the information that we'd accept that as part of their driveway okay. access cut. 
further discussions here among the committee commissioners the only <coughs> thing is when you make this motion to say that per the attached traffic yes. engineering study if that's along what you so with choose. the attached traffic study <coughs> hey do we have a someone like to make a motion Mr. Chairman, I guess I would like to <laughs> make a motion on right. this. Uh, 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 we've reviewed the uh, uh, attached traffic study and uh, found it to be uh, acceptable. And uh, I would like to make a motion that we uh, accept the proposal for the curb cut, curb cut uh, submitted by Domino Express. Does this go to the City Council? No, sir. This is a only place it will be okay I'll so second. you're moving approval oh, move to I'll, approve I'll second it we have a motion and a second to approve along with the attached traffic study the proposed driveway on Northwest 10th Street uh, for the uh, new convenience store we have a motion and a second is there anyone in the audience like to discuss that have any comments call the roll please Yes. Bob yes. Larry yes. 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 Welcome Thank to you. our community. Sir. Thank you. Thank you. Um, next item is new business. Do we have anything? There's no new business tonight, sir. Open discussion. I've got something. Okay. Um, <clears throat> since they've already done the curb cut, would it have made any difference? What our, how our vote went tonight. No, he didn't say. Uh, we can't discuss that. That uh, sort of being acted upon. Um, okay. <laughs> sorry, but I mean, that's part of the open means. Yeah. We've got to be cautious about okay. what we can discuss and what we can't discuss. I would like to, uh, well, to uh, invite everyone to the weekend performance of the Nutcracker, not this coming weekend, but the following weekend on December 1st, Saturday night at 8 o'clock and on Sunday afternoon at 2 o'clock, I believe. Uh, tickets are available at uh, several locations around town and uh, or you can purchase them at the door. Once again, uh, Deborah Vossen has put together a wonderful, uh, beautiful show. It'll be live orchestra and it's a great way to spend an afternoon with your family what a holiday treat for uh, the whole family uh, guarantee it would be enjoyable if you will go see it and also our lights in the park are on and we encourage everyone to get out and drive through our parks and uh, and uh, see the beautiful things that have been being put up since about September 1 I think it's taken it takes a while to get them up and uh, if you see fit, make a donation as you go through. But be sure and bring your friends and neighbors and have them come out and eat dinner in Yukon and, and go through the park and enjoy the lights and come see the Nutcracker on Saturday night. And what else do we have the uh, Philharmonic? Mm -hmm. December 13th at 7.30 at Fine Arts Auditorium. We're selling those tickets at YNB and they, we also have tickets at all YNB locations for the Nutcracker. That uh, Philharmonic on Thursday night is the same show that they put on, perform downtown at the, uh, not the Civic Center. What Civic Center, it? yes. Is that what they call downtown. it? Downtown, yes, it is yeah. a Civic Okay. Center. And it uh, is about 35 or 40 bucks, and you pay $5 here to see the same show. And the money, most of the money stays right here in Yukon. Half the money goes uh, one year to project graduation, the next year it goes to the foundation for excellence for the schools. So I encourage you to spend your money here in Yukon. Anything else? Anybody else have open discussion? Sir? Staff have anything? Or attorney or planner? Cindy? Okay, our next uh, meeting uh, will be December the 10th. Meeting adjourned. <laughs>